creation. It is the opening scene in the grand storybook that we know as the Bible. Of course, the Bible is actually a collection of many books, 66 of them to be precise, written over a span of somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 years, including a variety of genres such as history and poetry and prose. So many different aspects to this book that is at the core of our life together as the church. Sometimes, perhaps you have tried to pick up the Bible and thought it felt intimidating or overwhelming, or you weren't quite sure how to put all the pieces together or perhaps even where to begin. With all of this in mind, we decided that we would start this new year with a series entitled The Bible in Six Words. Uh, This is an opportunity to, to look at the core of the story, the grand sweep, if you will, of what we find in the pages and how there is a particular movement across those pages. Now, I want to offer a word of credit here at the beginning to author and pastor Josh McNall. Uh, Joshua is the one who wrote a book entitled Long Story Short, The Bible in Six Simple Movements that serves as, at least in some way, the basis for this series that we begin today. And as we start this series... The first word is creation. We begin here because it is where the Bible begins. Chapter 1 of Genesis at the very front of the Bible tells us the story of creation. You just saw a visual representation of that a moment ago. But in order to really appreciate this story and why it belongs at the beginning and why it is our first word in this series... We need to read backward a little bit. Let me explain. In the time of most of the writings of the Hebrew Scriptures, there were many creation stories in existence. Many ancient civilizations had them. They were a way for the people to attempt to understand how the world came into being. Because, of course, there were no human eyewitnesses. So the fact that the Bible includes a creation story is not unique in and of itself. But the way the people of Israel choose to tell that story, well, that is something that is quite remarkable. So let me set the background for you for a moment. Perhaps you remember that there was a time when the people of Israel, after having great success over a number of years, of generations actually, they fall into captivity. The Babylonian Empire takes them over and carts off many of the people of Israel to Babylon where they live in exile for generations. In this setting, they are exposed to Babylonian culture and Babylonian ideas. And part of that culture is the Babylonians' own creation story, one that is known as the epic Enuma Elish. So, What is fascinating is that it is in that context, when the people of Israel are captive, when they are not in their own land, that they choose to begin sharing a story and crafting a story of their own about creation. This very different story that they tell is a creative act of resistance, not only in the fact that they choose to not accept the Babylonians' version but also that the way they tell it is so different. You see, the Babylonian story and many other creation stories of the time were based in conflict. There was some conflict that caused great violence and disruption, and out of that creation comes into being. The people of Israel look back on their own experience with the God of Israel And they choose to tell a very different story. They consider what they know about God based on their own experience. And they determine that the God who loved them enough to establish covenant had to have been the same God who established all things, the very foundations of the world. This is a God who, based on their experience, had been faithful had been dependable, had been trustworthy, 
One whose core characteristic, as they recite time and time again in their songbook, the Psalms, is steadfast love. And so the people of Israel tell a story that is based on this lived experience. What they know to be true about God is what helps shape the way they communicate how everything came into being. Now the shocking part about this is that they were able to communicate this kind of story while they were in captivity. Even in the midst of of hard times, of unimaginable times, they can still look back and with confidence in what they have experienced before and with hope and trust in what they anticipate to happen in the future, they tell a story that is grounded in the loving creation of all things by a generous and self-giving God. And so, Not surprisingly, the theme that runs through the story of creation that begins the scriptures is the word good. In fact, that is the word that recurs over and over again throughout the six-act drama of creation that we read in chapter 1 of Genesis. In fact, This creation must have been so good and the experience of observing it so amazing that according to what we read in the book of Job, which is actually the oldest book in the scriptures, in the book of Job, it it seems to have caused a glow party to break out in heaven. In Job 38, as God is recounting for Job that time of creation, what God remembers is that as the foundations of the earth were being laid, It caused the morning stars to sing out and the heavenly beings to shout for joy. And so what we find here in the first chapter of Genesis is a story that begins with original goodness. Original goodness. Now perhaps you are more familiar with the phrase original sin. And make no mistake, Sin will enter the story. We'll get to that with word number two next week. But I want you to hear this today. Before there is sin, there is good. At the very foundation, at the very beginning, when God is fashioning all that God made, it is good. Perhaps that can be some welcome news for us on this particular Sunday, in this particular week, after events have unfolded in our nation this past week that seemed so unimaginable to so many of us and have caused heartbreak and and even despair and certainly suffering, to know that before there is sin, there is good. And it is the good that God is at work seeking to restore in the world. This, of course, is is the so what of our story. This is the so what of creation and why it is so important that it is at the beginning of our story. So, So that at least for one thing, at other times when there is suffering and despair, when there is hardship, when there is evil, when there is injustice, when there is oppression, we can remember that God made it and called it good. So what are we to do with this news today? One thing we can do is to remember that the creation story is meant to inspire awe. We see this response to creation time and time again in the pages of Scripture and and even in our own experience. When we see something of the majesty of God that causes us to break out in awe, In Exodus, in chapter 15, we hear the words, Who is like you, God? There is no one that can compare. In the Psalms, in multiple places, we hear language that speaks to the amazing wonder of who God is and all that God has made. And it is captured eloquently in Psalm 8. Who are human beings that you are mindful of them with all that you have created, O God? And even in Job, 
after hearing God recount all that God did, when, when God speaks in the whirlwind, at the end of it, Job is left to repent and to confess that he has spoken of things that he did not know and could not possibly understand. The creation story is meant to inspire awe for us. But not only that, the creation story also offers assurance. Assurance that God is, in fact, good. And therefore, not only at the beginning of creation, but even now, because creation is ongoing and continues to be underway, God continues to work for God's good purposes. Even in difficult times, we can find assurance here in this story. McNall, in his first chapter of the book, Long Story Short, puts it this way, Despite appearances to the contrary, God is on the throne. And this world did not come into being by a random explosion. Things may be difficult now. Things may be terrible. Maybe you feel the weight of those two sentences right now on this particular day at this particular time. Things may be difficult now. Things may be terrible. But McNall goes on, the story did not start that way. And the message of the creator is that it won't end that way either. And so the creation story inspires awe. It offers assurance. But then one other thing. The creation story also is a call to action. Now maybe you've never noticed that in the story. But, but remember that after God creates humankind, male and female, in God's own image, God creates them. God assigns responsibility. God calls the humans to be the ones who will be the caretakers, the trustees, the very stewards of all the goodness that God has created. Martin Copenhaver in his book, To Begin at the Beginning, says this, If everything we are, And everything we see is a part of a good creation. Then we must work for good in the world in partnership with the one who created it and declared it to be good. My friends, I hear that as a clarion call to you and to me in a time like this. To be at work partnering with the Creator, and imagine that, that the one who created everything would invest in us the trust and the responsibility to be a part of working for good along with God. Lastly, from a Christian perspective, the story of creation cannot be told without also remembering Jesus. In the beginning of the Gospel of John, which sits alongside the beginning of Genesis as informative to our understanding of creation, we hear these words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, Nothing came into being. The Word, the divine Logos, was there from the very beginning and is a part of the work that God does in creation from the start. And of course, part of our story is that that Word, that divine Logos, chooses to enter our human story. A little bit later in that first chapter of John, we hear these words, and the Word became flesh. And in His coming, we see the loving lengths to which God will travel to redeem God's good creation. 
My friends, God is not finished with us yet. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, creator of all things, you who formed the universe and who shaped each one of us within our mother's wombs, may we remember with awe your mighty works. May we find assurance once again today in the story of your great works. And may we choose to participate, to act alongside you and in following your son Jesus for the sake of the good. It is in his name that we pray. Amen.